Hi everyone, it's David from Doctors of Running, and today I'm going to be talking about a hot topic and frequent question that we get here at Doctors of Running, and that is, can the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite be a legitimate contender in the super shoe category for the marathon distance? Not just for the elite population, but also for the recreational population as well. And I'm going to dive into that in a little bit here, but just to go over the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite, the specs we got 6.7 ounces in men's size 9, 36 millimeters in the heel with 28 millimeters in the forefoot. The shoe is an 8 millimeter drop throughout. It does have a carbon fiber plate, which they call in a plate that runs through the entire length of the shoe and does have a bifurcation. In the forefoot, this will not be a full review. This is gonna be more focused on the marathon distance and what you can do with the shoe. Uh, earlier today, I did take it on 21 and a half miles, uh, as two hours and 14 minutes approximately, and wanted to make a video to see whether or not this is something that you can reasonably use in the marathon. Um, I think Molly Seidel proved that beyond a doubt over at the Olympics in Tokyo, but for a lot of people this has been a shoe that people have been thinking about for a while and for good reason. It's a relatively high stack. It is a nitrogen infused Piba midsole. It's got a lot of bounce to it and it shares a lot of similarities with the other super shoes on the market. Um, it has two different colorways. This is the normal colorway, the white on red. This is the limited colorway with some pretty wild colors on there. But I think it goes without saying in terms of Molly's performance and from what I ran in this morning, it is a contender and I think it is a shoe that a lot of people can use for the marathon. The nitrogen infused Piba midsole is very soft, very forgiving, and it offers a lot of bounce throughout when you're running. It, I will say I felt the plate a little bit once I passed 20 miles. The forefoot was starting to get a little bit firm. But I think that would happen in pretty much any other shoe at that point. Once you cross that 20 mile mark, anything goes. But the shoe felt great through 19 miles. And then that 20th mile started feeling it a little bit, but not the end of the world. Um... I will say the shoe has a pretty smooth transition throughout. It's probably the closest thing to what a trainer would feel like if it was a racing shoe. And what I mean by that is it doesn't feel like a gimmicky shoe. There's no intense rocker. There's no insane bounciness. I mean, it's certainly there. It's soft and it's bouncy, but it's not to the extreme of Zoom X or anything like that. And it's definitely rigid. There's certainly a carbon fiber plate in there, but there's still a little bit of flexibility to it as well. So it's not super rigid like some of these other shoes are either. So I think it's a relatively forgiving shoe in this super shoe category. And the eight millimeter drop feels true. It's a, it's a relatively smooth ride throughout. And it just feels good on the foot. The hold is great throughout. I just lace it down a little bit tight. I do notice that this can expand a little bit. Uh, so before I get going, I might walk around in it a little bit and then untie it, tie it again, and then get ready to roll. Uh, but the shoe can certainly run 26 miles. I did enjoy it. Um, there will be another video at another time talking about how to choose the shoe that is best for you specifically when deciding on the shoe to wear at your marathon. I think... This is certainly in the running. I'll, I'll be running at the California International Marathon uh, December 5th. I'm still deciding on which shoe I want to wear, and so I'm sampling some of these and some of these um, up-tempo long runs, or if we have workouts sprinkled in throughout the long run, um, trying to pick which shoe that I want to wear. And part of that decision goes into what does that shoe even feel like beyond 15 miles because the shoe will change over time as it decompresses. But that's a conversation for another time. Um, what I will say is this shoe is certainly a contender. It holds its weight throughout the entire run. Um, the ride stays very similar up until 19, 20 miles, which would have been give or take just shy of two hours time on feet probably for today. Um, so honestly, I'm very impressed with the shoe. I think Puma did a great job and 
for many people, this is a shoe that they're going to want to reach for. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them in the next week. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, please hit that bell, subscribe, check us out at Doctors of Running on not only the YouTube channel, but we have the podcast running on all platforms. We have our Instagram, Facebook, our Strava group, if you want to see what we're all up to, and all of our fan base as well. So we try to be a very inclusive community here. Um, I am wearing a Giants shirt today. Go Giants. They just clinched the National League West. So sorry for all you Dodgers fans, but we got it. Um, stay tuned.